Hello everyone and welcome to another Ultimate Fire episode of review. This is for episode 7 of season 24 titled Animal Instincts. Uh, probably my favourite episode of the season so far and we'll get to it. It's going to be a longer review than most of the others so uh, yeah let's just get to it. So, so far it's been a good season, you know, seven fights, all finishes, and the fighters take an opportunity to ch relax and just chill in a hot tub. You know, they, they chill out, they have a couple of drinks, and if past history is anything to go by when it comes to the other fighter, uh, relaxing and drinks often leads to drunken confrontations and lots of swearing. And uh, Matt Rizzo, who, remember, he lost in the last episode, Started calling out Jamie Alvarez, who also lost. And, uh, yeah, there was a lot of harsh words trade between the two. It was Rizzo that started it. And uh, it really... Hmm. It's just a thing that happens in the seasons. I mean, it didn't really happen last season. I mean, last season was one of the more... It was one of the nicer ones, but still, I mean, this time around, I don't think anyone could help it. You know, they argue over who fought better, who did uh, more work, and escalate from there. I do predict that because of this, the two will definitely fight the finale. I want them to fight the finale. They've both lost in the tournament already, so it would make sense. And not only that, but I believe they lost back-to-back -back in their fights. Uh, yeah, they did. Huh. Anyway, uh, let's just move on. The emotions just keep rising higher and higher. During Team Sohudo's training session, Charlie Arniz, who is the last fighter to fight for Team Sohudo against the male who's the last one to fight for Team Benavides, starts to get a little bit angry. We don't know much about Charlie Arniz. Uh, obviously, we do get the video packages. Uh, Charlie doesn't have any children, but he has a lovely family back home that he lives with. You know, his parents, his uh, siblings, he has a, an adorable niece. And... Uh, and we'll just cover Tim Elliott briefly as well. You know, he's got a girlfriend back home and a, and a daughter who named Avery, who's probably the most adorable kid of any of the fighters on the show. She's so damn cute. Anyway. Uh, yeah, Charlie starts getting a bit pissed off during training, starts acting kind of cocky, and calls out Kai Cora France, who was the dude who knocked out Terrence Mitchell in 30 seconds in episode 2. Was it episode 2? I believe it was. Just give me a moment here. No, it was episode one. And, uh, you know, Kai Kara France is a very reserved, quiet, nice guy who gets called out by Charlie Arnese, who just starts talking shit for no reason. He's not even drunk. I mean, this is a training session. He just, like, you know, you could argue that testosterone probably got to him. I don't know. Why would he call out someone like Kai, who is a nice guy, but could also probably knock Charlie the hell out? I mean... Don't make much sense to me, but if they do, if the two do wind up fighting the finale, I would not be surprised. And as I mentioned in the last episode review, I did of this this one. It's the coach's challenge, ladies and gentlemen. As you know, by the last two seasons I reviewed, I loved the coach's challenge. They did something a bit, kind of a bit different because, like, for the longest time, they really didn't give the fighters a sport to compete. I mean, I mean, there was the relay race in season twenty one. And, uh, yeah, but they um, often, like, didn't give them conventional sports. This time they gave them golf. They gave them the most boring sport on the planet, and they made it look kind of cool. I'm not too ashamed to admit that. They made golf seem awesome, in a way. And, uh, okay, here are the rules. Each coach had to hit 20 golf balls in ring-shaped targets, trying to get the ball as close as they can to the center in order to score the most points. The farther away the target was, the higher the score, and the highest score is a hole in one at the center of the farthest target away. There are six targets in total. The first team to earn 100 points wins a trophy and $10,000 for themselves and 1,500 per fighter for their team. After 19 rounds, Benavidez won with a score of 144 compared to 28 for Cejudo. That is horrendous. There's also another rule where um, if one could hit the. I believe it's the. Further in circles of the first four round poles and the more out of circles of the final two, that the next shot, if they get something, will be doubled. But yeah, Benavidez won like huge with 144 to 28. It was an amazing coach's challenge. It was a complete whitewash of one as well. But it was kind of fun to watch despite it being golf. 
Uh, I mean, what, what more can you say? The coach challenge is the best part of any Ultimate Fighter season, without a doubt. This time, no different. Absolutely hilarious for both sides. Sudo admitted how terrible he was at golf. They both did, but Benavidez, like, when he got going, it really got going. So, uh, yeah, it was really, really cool. Next up, we have the final fight of the quarterfinals of the season, with uh, Charlie Alaniz from Team Tejudo against Tim Elliott from Team Benavidez. And Tim Elliott manages to tie it up in the quarterfinals with 4-4 after defeating Alaniz by halfway through round one, or more like two minutes in, with a bulldog choke. Now, for those who don't know, a bulldog choke is kind of like a rear naked choke, but when you got it in position from the side of someone, when you don't have the back and you don't have the mounts locked in, it's kind of like a headlock you would do on a school ball, yet yeah, that's the way Tim Elliott said on the show. That's the way he beat Charlie Allen is with, and it's a legit submission. So, you know, it's not like Charlie went out. It was a very tight bulldog joke. I mean, damn. But, uh, yeah. Tim Elliott won, tied up 4-4. So, 4 for Suda, 4 for Benavidez. He did a really good job, and I definitely think he's got a shot at winning the tournament. I mean, he's a, you know, he's got experience, he's a very unpredictable fighter. He's probably my top pick of Team Benavidez. Demacia Page was uh, another top pick, but he lost really badly, so what can you do? And then lastly, the fights for the next round are announced for the semi-finals. We have Alexandri Pantasha against Kai Car France, both of Team Cejudo. Hiramaso Kakuba of Team Benavidez against Adam Angelin from Team Cejudo. Ronaldo Candido against Eric Shelton, both of Team Benavidez, and finally Tim Elliott from Team Benavidez against Matt Schnell from Team Cejudo. I think those are going to be really, really good fights. I definitely think they made the right calls with who's going to fight who. And, uh, yeah, this was a really good episode. Probably my favourite of the season. Every every time it's a coach challenge, it becomes my favourite episode of the season. It's just nice, you know. It's nice to see the coaches who are, are, are obviously legitimate fighters trying and failing at a sport that they're really, really terrible at. I might do a top ten list about the best coaches challenges, actually. That's a good idea. It's been a while since I've done a top ten list. Eh, might come back. Might. Anyway, that'll probably about do it for this review. Sorry, my mouth was getting really, really dry there. Uh, yeah, that'll do it for this review. I'll see you some point during the weekend, uh, whenever I've gotten my airborne backtracking episode written. Sorry, it, it's been it's been a an odd week, let's just say that. I don't want to go too much into it, but that's neither here nor there. I'm gonna go. I hope you enjoy this review as much as I enjoy reviewing them, because I really do. And I'll uh, see you all next time. Probably next Friday. Uh, next Friday after my airborne review, because there's no UFC uh, this weekend. There was going to be, but then it was cancelled. So, uh, yeah, that'll do it for now. I'll see you all later. Bye-bye. Take care.